I don't like my Gene Stealer cults. There, I said it. I don't know why. I have completely fallen out of love with this army. It doesn't do for me what my other armies do for me. My Black Templar are perfection. My orcs make me want to watch Mad Max over and over. My Glamrock Dark Eldar are super cool. My Psychedelic Death Guard are super fun to paint. These guys are kind of bluish. There's nothing here. But I haven't eBayed them because whenever I think about this army vanishing, I think about like, I would like to, I've played with this army a bunch. I would like to play the Gene Stealer Cult. They look like a lot of fun. I've read the 10th edition index and I do want to like the Gene Stealer Cult. And today, I'm gonna figure out how. The biggest problem with my creepy boys and girls is the paint job. I followed the box art as close as I could, but really the Games Workshop box art for these guys is unobtainable. Each guy would take hours to paint and Gene Stealer Cult is a horde army. Once I got tired of the box art, I tried again introducing green and trying to do a better job on the skin, but green was one too many colors, on top of there already being way too many colors. I put the cult away for a few years, but Kill Team brought me back. My painting skills improved in that time, but my color scheme was still way too much. Another problem is how incoherent the cult is. Space Hulk Gene Stealers and normal Cadians are part of the same army. I love the Gene Stealer cult vehicles like the Rock Grinder, it's part of what got me to start the army, but then there are normal sentinels standing right alongside them, looking like I'm proxying two armies together, which is sorta of true. Step one is gonna be saying goodbye to the Games Workshop box art and coming up with a paint scheme I actually enjoy doing, because I'm not gonna paint nothing if it's not fun. I am not sad at all to see these old paint jobs go away. And I also pinned every single model. I don't know what I was thinking, but I probably wasted days doing this. I cleaned up my cultists and fixed my old mold lines that Baby J, or more accurately, Tired College J, didn't catch the first time around. And 10th edition has introduced free war gear into the game, so I finally feel free to splash out on all the cool weapons that previously were prohibitively expensive to buy for my cheap fodder units. For the bases, I decided to lean into the storytelling of my cult. They're miners, they should be shambling around on cold, desolate rocks, and to build these bases I started by gluing down some cork and then filling the middles with milliput. This is also great because Gene Stealer cultists have a really extreme lean to them, so this putty can fix their posture a little bit and make them easier to paint. I covered my bases in a layer of texture paste and then applied some wood glue and sprinkled on some pebbles and sand. My old bases were kind of a woodland theme. These are gonna be sad, lonely stone. Another problem I have with the cult is the banners. They look nice, but a few decorations with some jewelry hanging down is not my definition of a banner. I rolled out some green stuff, cut out a sheet, distressed the bottom, and hung it from the front. It might not be as perfect as the Games Workshop original, but in my mind, a banner is a banner, a big dumb flag, and every squad of cultists gets one. Also, learn from my mistakes. On the Acolyte hybrid flag, I tried to use my hairdryer to heat up the green stuff and make it cure faster. It softened the green stuff, and so now you can see the outline of the old banner underneath. Patience is the best tool for green stuff, and I have none. It's the moment of truth. These fellows were painted for the first time in 2015. It's time to give them a 2024 makeover. I started with a Zenithal highlight. I want to get as far away from my original scheme as possible. I mixed Black Templar contrast paint and Lamy in medium 50-50 and put this over their armor and weapons. I dry brushed a little gray over top to highlight all their weird little tubes and tools, and for the clothing parts, I hit these with a coat of Skeleton Horde, a tan color but very similar in shabbiness to the gray. Now for the fun. I put some yellow on the weapons, painting the hand grips and flash hiders yellow to bring some attention to the business end of the models. And I painted hazard stripes where I could, highlighting these with a warm white. Then I dusted the armor and weapons with a silver dry brushing and these cultists are 90% finished, in record time. Now for the fun part, their weird heads. I mixed beige and magenta together and base coated all their bald heads, highlighting up through tan and then to pure white. Because I finished the bodies so fast, I spent a little extra time getting their heads to really pop. Now for those banners. Games Workshop doesn't have a Gene Stealer cult transfer sheet, so I had to freehand the cult symbol. But it was nice and easy on my simple green stuff banners. Then for the bases, I took cold gray army painter speed paint and slobbered this over the ground. Gray next to gray will help the bases not pull focus from the model and the coldness will let there be some separation. To finish off these bases, I mixed up some pigment powder and put a drop of this down randomly on the bases. My cultists are looking creepy with their weird heads being the obvious focal point. After painting the edge of the base black, they were looking spiffy. I have finally found a Gene Stealer cult color scheme that I actually enjoy doing. It's a departure from the Games Workshop box art, but that is for the best. I had no fun at painting the Games Workshop box art. It was just so much base coating and I don't like base coating. 
Two thin coats of blue, two thin coats of brown, two thin coats of beige, two thin coats of gray, and on and on and on until all I wanted to do was throw a wash on there and call them done. Now I can let contrast paint do most of the heavy lifting, and then I get to spend my painting time doing what I enjoy, working on their weird inflamed flesh. Another thing I really like about my color scheme is they're basically gray with an accent color of yellow and a special things color of red. And I feel like that's a really nice simple palette that I can push and pull every time I'm faced with a new unit, particularly the vehicles. And speaking of vehicles, vehicles are one of the reasons I fell out of love with the Gene Stealer cult, because I really wanted a ton of Achilles Ridge Runners. And Achilles Ridge Runners might be my least favorite Warhammer model. It is the dumbest thing. One of the things that makes the Gene Stealer cult actually unique is that they're just normal dudes with normal stuff and they have a very unique aesthetic in Warhammer. That's what makes the Rock Grinder so genius. It's just a normal piece of heavy equipment that's a little extra dangerous and the Sentinels fall into that same category. The Achilles Ridge Runner looks like a Batmobile. It is a total fantasy car. It's got its two heavy stubbers, bolted to the front of it so it can only shoot in the direction of travel, it looks like the fantasy Hot Wheels race car version of the Rock Grinder. Didn't like it at all, needed about six for my list, so I just kind of wrote the whole thing off. So, we here at Eon's Battle made our own, and a whole bunch of other cult goodness. I've been feeling the tendrils of the Hype Fleet pulling on my bones, and so I brought the cult to our Patreon. Right now, for the month of April, you will find the Cargo Hauler, a simple grimdark Volkswagen complete with all the armaments a growing cult needs. Whether it's missiles, mortars, or lasers, don't leave the mine without one. And the Mining Drill. We'll get to this guy a little later, but he is spicy. And of course, you can't have miners without a mine. All of this will be available on our Patreon for the month of April. If you love cool mining vehicles, or you're like me and you love the Four-Armed Emperor, you can find it there. Even though this is a big vehicle, Games Workshop has it up on a base. At least it'll help it to look uniform next to the other cultists. I took what I learned on my cultists and applied it to the monstrous 120mm base. The only difference is that I used cat litter and super glue to bulk it up instead of only milliput. I don't know if I recommend using this much super glue. This much ultra thin super glue gets really hot and kicks off a lot of fumes that can irritate your eyes, but I came prepared. I smoothed it out with milliput and then finished it off with texture paste, sand, and pebbles. Now that I have the base built, I can disassemble my car for painting. I primed and zenithaled every piece. Having it all separate will make it much easier to reach everything with simple airbrush base coat, speed paints, washes, and dry brushing. For the cabin, I went with yellow. I sprayed my cult's skin color from below and then yellow from above. Now that I have my color palette, I want to use it, and keeping all the colors consistent will help make the army feel more uniform. I mixed up some speed paint black with medium and then gave all the metal bits a coat. In the great debate between Army Painter Speed Paint versus Games Workshop Contrast, I have to give it to Army Painter for stuff like this. The longer drying time makes it a breeze to give even big vehicles like this a quality coat. I picked out the decorations like these ammo boxes with a military green and on accents like the blanket that was previously hiding these mortars from prying inquisitorial eyes, a coat of yellow. The seats got the same contrast paint my cultist's pants got, and remember that special things are red part of my paint job? Well, mortars and lasers are very special to me. Now that I have a color down on everything, I can start to perfect it, sponging on some gray over the mega bumper and adding some micro scratches. And all the metal got a dry brushing of some silver to add a glisten to the dull gray. On top of the yellow, I watered down some Agrex Earthshade a lot to bring out some of the hidden details there. And I spent some quality time on the weapons, dry brushing the laser and then hitting it with some inks to make it glow and highlighting each little mortar. I sponged some yellow onto the cabin to make it look well-traveled with hundreds of years of wear and tear and every headlight got a few poofs of white ink and then yellow ink for the glow. Then every part of my cargo hauler was complete. Ah, oh, painting vehicles is very different to painting dudes. Instead of one little character coming to life before my eyes, it's a bunch of little tasks, but they're all done and it's sitting here. It's like a brand new Lego set and I get to put it together. This little truck gave me everything I wanted out of the Ridge Runner. Instead of a sleek race car, this actually makes sense. It's a beat up old truck that has been schlepping the cultists to and from their job for centuries, waiting patiently for the day of ascension when it would be filled with weapons and ammo. With powerful stolen weapons bolted to the back and driven right under the doorsteps of the oppressive Imperium. It really tells the story of a civilian uprising and will look great alongside my cult. Oh, I am ready to run some ridges. It feels really exciting to be really excited about a gene stealer cult vehicle. 
oh, I am falling back in love with this army. And speaking of this army, the Gene Sealer Cult in 10th edition are now completely separate from the Astra Militarum, but they can ally in 500 points of them. And it doesn't feel great because a lot of the Imperial Guard stuff, even though very similar to Gene Stealer Cult units, can't do all the Gene Stealer Cult shenanigans. But I found one data sheet that changes all of that. You ever heard tell of a Hades breaching drill? Probably not. It's a very obscure model, but its rules are pretty awesome and basically turns the Imperial Guard into the Gene Stealer Cult because it might not look it. But this is an Imperial Guard drop pod. Usually I don't love big 3D prints, but this big sucker was printed in lovely Soraya Tech Fast Navy Gray. Soraya Tech makes the best 3D printing resin. Use the link in the description to try it out for yourself. I prepped my mining drill with the same Zenithal I gave all my cultists and moved on to some brushwork. I wanted to look like this vehicle was yellow, but all its drilling has worn the paint away from the front half. I used my cultist skin color again to introduce some shading into my yellow and highlighted it with a spritzing of warm white and then a glazing of very vibrant yellow over top. Now for the dunking. I mixed up my black speed paint and lathered up my drill. Once that was dry, I sponged on some yellow to help sell the previously yellow sections and got to work adding some decals. I found some skulls and crossbones out of the Krieg sheet that look perfect on the fuel tank, and some Astra Militarum vehicle markings to show the designation of this drill. It's unit number 69. I dry brushed the whole vehicle with a light gray paint and then a wash of Agrath Earthshade to make the yellow look sadder. Then some sponging of very light gray and a dry brushing of silver all over the model. This guy painted up really quick. The only real painting was picking out the hydraulics with silver. Then to finish it off, a good dunking of the same brown pigment powder my cultists stand on. The Hades Breaching Drill, one of the oddest units in all of Warhammer 40k. It essentially takes any Imperial Guard unit and turns it into a Gene Stealer Cult unit by essentially giving it Deep Strike. The juice of this unit is it arrives via Deep Strike and then it can yoink an Imperial Guard unit from strategic reserves and place them on the board nine inches away from this unit. And because it doesn't have a transport capacity, it just yoinks. It, you can do some really oddball stuff. 20 blob of Kriegsmen, 30 blob of Cadians with an attached command squad. You can do some really dumb stuff. And I don't know if it's super practical, but I just want to make this thing work because it's so fun and flavorful. My dream would be to bring with this guy six Bulgrins. Now, Gene Stealer Cult can't have Bulgrins because they have the Ogren keyword, but Games Workshop. If I can have Kazarkin, the elite veteran infantry of the Imperial Guard, I can brainwash a Shrek. It's not that hard to believe. But anyhow, next up on my Gene Stealer Cult painting project, some Gene Stealer Cult specific terrain, and I'll be finishing it off with some often overlooked but absolutely essential pieces of any Gene Stealer Cult army. This mineshaft was inspired by one of Games Workshop's most adorable kits, the Hobbit Hole. A very unique kit that doesn't actually come with everything you need. It consists of a small collection of doors, windows, and chimneys that you need to set into foam to finish it up. One thing that is severely lacking in our terrain collection is good hills. I traced out my mine in some foam and cut it out gluing on another layer to hide my little 3D printed potato. Then I broke out my saw and started hacking and whacking, making a natural looking lump of foam. I added on the top door and glued on some chunks of cork to make the surface feel a little more natural. Then came time for the plaster, sculpt a mold. I smeared this white stuff all over the hill and then stuck on my chimneys, pinning them into the foam. Once again, I smeared the whole hill in texture paste and then added my sand and pebbles to match my cultist spaces. My Gene Stealer Cult Hobbit Hole is now complete, but it's going to take a fair amount of time to dry. So while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to work on my Gene Stealer Cult Blips. And what is a blip, you might ask? Well, it is the thing that makes Gene Stealer Cult special. When my units die, I roll a dice, and on a 5-up, they get to come back to life. But not right away. First, they reappear on the board as a token. Games Workshop says to use 32mm bases for these tokens, but that is hella lame. Instead, I'm going to use the last piece of this cultist pack, the crates. These are great scattered terrain, and Nick printed these in both resin and FDM, and I have to say, FDM has come a long way. I have my eye on these open crates for my needs. I took my oldest, junkiest dealers and glued them jumping out of the boxes. The blip tokens are the Gene Stealer Cult Surprise, and what better way to show this than literal mystery boxes? I zenith all these, and using my Gene Stealer Cult formula, I gave the boxes a vehicle wash and the skin I base coated with light beige, followed by a glazing of my Gene Stealer skin tone. I highlighted the flesh of the Steelers all the way up to pure white, and then sponged the boxes with light gray, finishing them off with a dry brushing of silver. I picked out the biomass with dark beige, and to create a shadow, I airbrushed the Steelers' lower half with Cadian flesh tone wash, letting it splash onto the walls. 
and brushing it onto the fleshy growth spilling out of the box. Just like that, I now have the best looking blips this side in the Mississippi. Now that's what I'd call a blip, a little bit better than a 32 millimeter base. And it adds to the storytelling of my cult. Maybe on the day of ascension, there's mysterious unmarked boxes just left outside. And maybe inside of those boxes are some gene stealers. I made four of them. I really hope I don't need more than four blips. I feel like if I lose more than four units in the same turn, I've got a bigger problem than not enough blips. Now with my blips done, the only thing left to do is to finish up the mine. The mine is a pretty simple little project, especially after all the other culty goodness I painted. After a zenithal, I gave it a blast of my cold speed paint gray, and the flooring got a blast of yellow. I picked out the metal with black speed paint, and the yellow got a brown wash. I dry brushed the ground with a cold gray to better match my army's bases, and sponged on some light gray onto the metal bits, finishing these off with a silver dry brushing. Then I went back to my pigment powder mix, making some spots, and then using a damp brush to feather these out, and getting it to look exactly like it was meant for my cult. With the mineshaft now complete, my gene stealer cult are officially cool! Oh, it's taken so long, but I am now back in love with my gene stealer cult. Let's do a little comparison between what the cult looked like last week versus today. The best thing I can say about my old cult is that the rock grinders look pretty good. Otherwise, it's a bit of a mess of not so well painted goons backed up by squadrons of mismatched vehicles, all standing on bases that not only are a bad fit, but my colors seem to be different on every single guy. It was basically the brand newness of the army, both to me and to 40k, that was keeping my energy up. Now, my cult is mine, with my very own color scheme that is very easy to pull off and lets me paint how I like. They are dark little monsters with weird bald heads that jump out at you. And the scheme is fast. I bet I can get 2,000 points up and running in no time, and I am very excited to see it. This army came so close to eBay, but now it's not going anywhere. Blessed be the four-armed emperor, and all hail the coming of the Star Children. Check out our Patreon if you like the look of what we've made here, and if you're a cult player, or you have an old army you don't like the look of anymore, why not give it another go? Sometimes you just need a second try.